Okay, say my name is Taeyun, and I'm a fellow here. Uh, what does fellow mean? Fellow means that I live here? No. <laughs> fellow means that I work here as a full-time artist and researcher. And I do a lot of things that involve public and general participation. Today I'm going to be talking about how we can design participation. And at the end of the day, and at the end of my session, which is 45 minutes, you're going to have a chance to wear this hat and have um, full control over us. So we'll get to that. And we're going to design a simple participatory piece together. So what I make, I make drawings and um, computer stuff and all video and other stuff. But mostly I make situations and situation where participation could occur. Situation in a way that of uh, intervention. So it's not uh, architecture, it's more like squatting. It's not a car, it's like more like a bicycle. So I go into the places that have rules and try to break it for a very short period of time. It's quite general, but we all have a world that we live in, right? What is, I guess the goal of DDC for me is get to know your, your world a little bit and invite you to experience the world that I live in. Artists create the world and share with the people around them or the general public or audience. How many of you consider yourself artists? Great. Almost all, all of us. I, I think you're sitting here today because you're an artist. And even if you don't consider yourself artist, by the end of the program, you will be credited as an artist. You'll be respected as artists among this group of people. And you'll publish your work to the public. And by, by act of publishing, you'll be an artist, creating your world and, and sharing it with the others. Well, my title for my session was Designing for Participation. What does design mean? Can you, anybody tell me what design means for, for you? Create or to express what you want to present. Great. I think all of these are just right answers. It means different things for different people. For me, it means a system of processes. Um, processes are the way we create work, the way we approach an obstacle or problem or task. By calling it a system, it means that it could be repeated to different situations or different tasks. It's a learned behavior. And is it, it is a system that can be rep replicated by other people. Then why are we trying to design for participation? Because by participating in the work, the work becomes relevant to the time and space that we share. You invite people to you, your world. And I'm going to start giving some concrete examples of that. This is a work that I created in 2005, which is ages ago, six years ago. It's a game called uh, Shoot Me If You Can. This is when mobile phone was becoming very popular and um, accessible compared to the few years before that. Everyone was taking pictures and calling each other and sending the pictures to one another. another. And I thought it's almost like a game. It's like a survival game of image. So I designed a game that there's a green team and a red team. and to win the game, you have to take picture of another team and send it to the server through a multimedia message, uh, MMS. And if you're, if you're shot, you're out of the game. So you have to get outside of the designated urban space. So it's like playing a tag, but with uh, images. The game was pretty fun. It, it took me about a week to organize everything, to get people excited about this idea, and um, to make the system It's way too dark, right? one problem. 
project that I started working in 2005, and it's one of the projects that I feel closely attached to because it was quite simple. And it's when I started working with digital technology more um, intimately than before. I studied uh, video and performance art in college, and I studied um, engineering at a graduate school, mostly um, make creating and presenting contents for culture industry. That means making of uh, tourist guides using GPS or um, creating applications for mobile phone. But to integrate art and culture into the engineering side of it, there are projects that are closed system and those projects don't tend to work so well and there are projects that have open system. The difference is that you design participation before you start the project and that ends up being very specific ways of participating and that's very limiting. By making open system for a project, it means that you're open for different interpretation and different use of the projects. This was in 2006. Um, there was a lot of tourists in Seoul South Korea where I was living and tourists were taking pictures like non-stop you know? and when I'm a tourist I go I go and take pictures too so I, I made a simple device that captures my heartbeat so every time my heart beats it takes a photograph made these drawings sketches this is a still shot from a tourist spot and you see the heart rate now, I wanted to be like this super tourist, just taking pictures with a lot of other people, but they were really scared of my outfit. <laughs> and they were just constantly running away from me. So it's uh, another example of a closed system that I imagined a participation before, and it just didn't work. So through working as an artist for about five years or six, seven years professionally, I, there are a few methods that seem to work for me that I want to share with you. So built in a specific structure, that of rules, constraints, or competition, or whatever. So design for me is uh, setting up a rules, and breaking the rules is part of the designing process. But the rules could be as creative and flexible as you want it to be, but uh, sticking to that rule and not changing it is really benefactory. So for the case of the Shoot Me If You Can, which is the first game that I shared, there was a rule of having to take picture and uh, restriction of the urban space, a uh, four block radius. So if people go outside of the ra uh, blocks, they're out of the game. Simplicity of interaction is very helpful. So if you have all this idea and all these technical things and different narratives and different actors in the, in the project, they're, people are not going to understand it. They're not going to have the curiosity to get interest in the project. So it's very s simple. It's better than a uh, complex in interaction. Same with technology. If you could make a really great project with a very simple technology, it's usually more effective than a complex technology. So fun, something fun and lightheartedness is always good. But what is really good about voluntary participation is that they can walk away at any time. You don't want to force anybody to do anything for you. You want them to be happy and excited and willing to participate in your project. And the idea of failure has something that I learned over the course of a few projects. Sometimes a failed attempt of a project is better than a success of a bad idea. If you have this grand idea and you need to see that happen, you need to make that happen, it's gonna be a great learning experience through that failure. And I failed many times with these projects and sometimes I feel like I learned so much more and it was a better experience for me and the others. So failure is not uh, something to be ashamed of. This is another project that I did a um, few, few weeks ago, about two, uh, two months ago. And it's not a failure, it's a, something that worked as an open-ended project. And I, I want to tell you why it worked as an open-ended project. There's a cemetery by my apartment. Uh, it's called New York City Marble Cemetery. It's a private cemetery built in the 1860s. And all the owners are missing or they don't have any relatives anymore. So the place is uh, almost like a uh, relic. It doesn't belong to anybody, but it's not a public space. 
So I'll see that cemetery from my apartment every day, but I can't access it. I thought that's sort of like um, idea of death or absence to me. You know that it's coming, but you can't really get to it. And I wrote stories about people that I miss, people who are not at, uh, present from me. I wanted to share those stories with other people. But I was also wanting to listen to their stories. So a way of engaging their participation was to use that site. And I wrote a simple software to listen, to play my stories it's with video and audio, but also record their own stories. So the participants were having their laptop, and each story would tell them where to go. So for example, if you want to listen to my story about a uh, grandfather, it'll tell you to walk to the right side of the cemetery, and then it'll ask, if, if, is the story, um, are you there yet? And then if the answer is they are there, they'll tell the story, and it has some re relevance to the things that they are seeing, physical things. And at the end of each story, I would ask them to record their story or not. And also, if you record it, you have a chance to share it with others or not. So this is about the experience, not sharing, um, not about um, exposing your personal stories. It worked out pretty well. And I had to develop this comfort zone before participants were able to share their stories. So I had to be really honest and tell my very personal stories. And you can't really go up to a person and be like, hey, I have an art project, can you do it for me? You know, that's, that's not the best way of doing it. You have to be slowly build your way up to um, approaching those people and then ask them the right questions. Then the question of like, why digital? Why are we doing a digital day camp? I guess that's the big question. I'm interested in the possibilities and limitation of digital technology as a medium. It enables us a lot of things. It enables us to make movies with almost no money. It enables us to talk with people who are far away. But its limitation is that it mediates the relationship between me and you and the content and us. So it's highly mediated experience. By mediated, you feel a little bit distance from the actual things happening. So there's a plus and minus side of it. You might have a very different idea of the limitation and possibility, and I'll be happy to learn about that. Chloe touched upon collaboration, so I wanna talk about cooperation. This is a cooperative environment. We are here to help you, and you're here, here to help us too. A lot of my projects ask for cooperation for people, and these few methods of participation are really helpful when you're trying to ask for help. And I'm interested in creating a platform for learning. In my website, there's a, a folder called workshops. This is a workshop that I did last year with iBeam in San Jose, which is next to San Francisco. The whole workshop was about making a film first person perspective. So everything was shot in the perspective of the maker. It started out quite simply with um, webcam on top of your helmet. So it'll make a movie as you walk or interact with people. And then the students experimented uh, for three days of different perspectives. This guy is uh, uh, attaching the camera to the skateboard. And they created this awesome device that was um, two cameras attached to a helmet. So when they're riding skateboard, it would rotate and it would get a 360 degree uh, view of their face. It's quite interesting. And another, th I helped this student make this um, device with multiple cell phones that would make a um, video from about five different perspectives. These are the general public playing with the devices that the uh, students made. Let me see if this will play. One mile to privacy. My room for my safe bed. 
to the city, through the shells of families or friends or those hidden away in happy solitude. Another workshop I did in 2008, this is called uh, Dot Play Mobile Telecommunication. South Korea is a country that exports a lot of mobile phones. Even iPhones or Apple products, there's a lot of Korean um, um, parts into it. So the industry is very big and it's part of the culture as well. At the same time, there's a lot of waste of mobile phones. People buy a lot and they throw out a lot. This is a work by, um, I think, fourth grader or third grader. So we scavenged a lot of used phones that was about to get exported to other countries for recycle. And then there's only a few things that you could do with an old mobile phone, which is a turn it on, tur turn it off, get the data out, like an old SM SMS or um, call in or log information, or use the uh, vibration motor, like a, a motor that makes your phone uh, ring. And this kid made a robot, it's, it's called Transformer. And then if you press the heart, it, the whole thing would vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> Anything from a simple toy like that to, this is a tour of um, uh, mobile phone towers. All the mobile phones are working because there are repeaters of signal. The wireless is only from the repeater to our phone. It's actually uh, wired up. To designing a system that is not um, hierarchical. This is an idea for a, a company that is grassroots and free mobile phone telecommunication. So theoretical um, ideas like that as well. A lot of what I do now is research-based performances. And I research about urban space, new media, collective behavior, and ideas of a city and the rural space, the relationship between urban and the outside. And my practice revolves around some very broad and unrealistic questions. But I think the un those unrealistic questions are the answers to the problems that we have. Imagine a central park as a community garden. How many people could it feed? Imagine Manhattan as a place that traffic cannot go through. Imagine a place that there's no energy. How can we survive off each other? What kind of cooperation and participation is necessary? So I'm designing for the potential and possible futures that are based on fiction. But I'm going to wear this hat back. And we're going to design a very short participatory performance. But I have suggestions as, as the rules go. In there, the yeah. best. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to clear up all the computers. No. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Thank you.